Hey, what's going on guys? It's Bagas here, and after reviewing 21 Nicer documentaries, you can say I know a thing or two about them. One such thing is the depiction of the dinosaurs themselves, and what I've noticed is that documentaries tend to go for two routes, telling a story with their dinosaurs, or simply showcasing them. That is the topic for today's video. We are going to be comparing those two different approaches, and seeing whether or not one is superior to the other. Now, in order to have some form of reasonable methodology within this video, I am going to take three documentaries from each category and analyze them to see if the approach was effective before reaching a final conclusion. Now, without any further delays, let's get on with the video. The first documentary I'm going to be looking at for the story approach is Ballad of Big Al. To refresh your memory, Ballad of Big Al tells the story of a beautifully preserved allosaurus nicknamed Big Al from the day he was born to the day he died. Now obviously the story approach works best here because it's essentially a biography of Al's life. But to go deeper, there are many small stories within this big narrative that is the life of Big Al. Throughout the episode, we see that as Al grows up, he encounters new experiences and there's always a constant sense of progression within Al's life. A lot of them being subtle ones that make the show feel great beyond the surface level. It paints Al's life as one of a bright future that through a sequence of events ends in tragedy, but with the irony that his salvation was just minutes away. The story approach also allows the show to put more subtle details like when Al is flourishing, the environment around him is green and lush, but then as he gains more injuries, the environment starts to get more dry and lifeless in the dry season. Something else to mention is the separate episode, Big Al Uncovered which exclusively focuses on the science. Due to this format, choosing the story route was really a no-brainer as since you have a whole nother episode fully dedicated to the science, you don't have to worry about interruptions within your story. So was Ballad of Big L's story approach effective? Unsurprisingly, yes. The next dinosaur documentary I'm going to be looking at is Dinosaur Revolution. Now, Dinosaur Revolution is an interesting case, as arguably you can say it's a combination of both story and showcase, but since it predominantly uses a story approach, I'm popping it in here. This is where we get to go deeper into the argument, as this one has scenes of paleontologists talking to the camera, and some other scenes intercut with the story. So was it the right approach? Well, since the cutaways were relatively brief and also relatively uncommon, it still allowed the show to depict a story, in fact multiple stories. They accomplish this by making the story have a simple yet satisfying progression It also works within the runtime, as two of the four episodes are segmented. The stories themselves, despite how simplistic they are, can sometimes have deeper themes and symbolisms within them that gives it a greater feel. Also, despite having some ridiculous situations, the sequence of events do flow from one to another really naturally and none of them feel forced, with maybe one or two minor exceptions. The stories also allow the dinosaur characters to be more interesting to watch and the conflicts are realistic enough to not be a stretch, with again a few exceptions here and there. So despite having to fit within an overall short duration period, it still succeeded at depicting interesting stories that while are simplistic, have deep themes and symbolisms with satisfying resolutions. The final documentary for the story approach is Sea Monsters A Prehistoric Adventure. Much like Ballad of Big Al, it shows the life of an individual animal, in this case Dolly, from her birth to her death. What differentiates it is its ability to create beauty and simplicity. The story is basically Dolly growing up and going on an adventure in the Cretaceous Sea before going back to the place she was born, raising several offspring before dying. This example also shows the poetic capability of the dinosaur documentary genre as throughout her life, her family ha all had brutal deaths by predators, yet she dies peacefully of natural causes, as if to say after everything she's been through, all the hardships and tragedies within her life, she deserves a peaceful and tranquil end, free of any violence. Also, like Dance of Revolution, there are cutaways to dick sites and cut, and like that documentary, it goes around this hurdle by keeping the story simple, yet still having something deeper within it, in this case, that poetic feel. So like the previous documentary, it got around a short duration by creating a simple story with again deep themes, but also created a poetic type feel as the story unfolds. 
All three documentaries used the story approach as it was the most effective way to deliver what each wanted. All of them had deep themes and symbolisms as a result of the story, and they also made the dinosaur characters more interesting to watch. It also allows each documentary to have a natural progression and flow from one sequence to another that makes them easier to watch and follow. In the case of Dinosaur Revolution and Sea Monsters of Prehistoric Adventure, due to the short duration and infrequency of the cutaways, it still allows for a story to be made that is also simple so that when there is a cutaway, it doesn't feel like it gets in the way of the story. One last thing about the story approach is that it almost guarantees the entertainment aspect. Since this is a piece of media, it needs to have that entertainment value to attract mainstream audiences, and the story aspect makes it easier to accomplish that as stories are what attracts an audience. So to clarify what this segment even means, basically the dinosaur scenes aren't interconnected with each other where one flows to the other, but instead are just scenes of a dinosaur doing something for example, but there's no real narrative going on throughout the episode or even going between the segments. Now out of all the documentaries I chose, Chased by Sea Monsters is arguably the one that you can say is misplaced, but really I just needed a documentary that was on par with Ballad of Miguel that somewhat did the story approach, so cut me some slack. Despite the overlying narrative of Nigel going to the seven deadliest seas of all time, the actual creatures for the most part don't have a storyline within them, and it's more of Nigel driving the narrative forward rather than the creatures themselves. This approach obviously allows Nigel to be the central focus, as he is the human character, and we kind of see the prehistoric seas through his eyes. The showcase approach also gives a more realistic scenario of what would happen if you were to actually travel back in time to see these creatures, so it makes the show kind of grounded despite the inherent premise. It also gives more time for an idea to deliver information to the audience and give us more insight on how he's going to encounter these animals. Going in the story approach would mean that you also have to split the narrative which would not be a good idea as it can make it feel like we're jumping all over the place. So for what Chase by Sea Monsters was going for, the showcase approach was the right decision as to not overcrowd the show. Now much like Dinosaur Revolution in the story segment, Planet Dinosaur has cutaways to analyses of the aspects of the dinosaurs, but unlike Dinosaur Revolution there are way more and they appear more often. This type of format doesn't really give the flexibility to make a full narrative story, as it would just be cut up by the cutaways. In this way, Planet Dinosaur was kind of forced to take the showcase route, but I do think they did do a decent job in making short snippets into the world of the dinosaurs that focused on particular aspects as a way to go around the frequency of the cutaways. It also allowed the documentary to have a much stronger science aspect to it, and while I said in my review that there could be a better way of doing it, the fact that it wanted to focus a lot more attention on the science means that one way or another they were gonna have to compromise on the story. Also, each scene still feels somewhat connected because there is a central theme within each episode that helps bridge the gap between seemingly disconnected scenes. So while Planet Dinosaur technically was kind of forced to choose the showcase route, it did a decent job with what it had and it did allow for a stronger science element within the documentary. The final documentary I want to talk about is C-Rex. Like Planet Dinosaur, C-Rex wanted to show more of the science but also like Chased by Sea Monsters had this overlying narrative of the history of the Mesozoic Oceans. This combined with the short 40 minute runtime meant that the documentary had to cram a lot of information, and thus the best way was to go for the showcase route. The scenes themselves do a good job at showing small scale interactions between the animals, and it ultimately allowed them to focus more on the science as a result. The format also kind of limited how much they could show in the dinosaur or I guess marine and animal scenes, as you not only have the science aspect but also the visual sequences and Julie being an audience surrogate. The showcase route also meant that they didn't have to worry about interconnecting to different time periods, which while it does kind of make each one feel kind of disconnected to an extent, the overlying narrative of the history of the Mesozoic Oceans helps to remedy that minor problem and still makes each part feel connected despite being inherently disconnected in a vacuum. So despite all the limitations it had, CRX still accomplished in making a decent, more science-driven documentary by going the showcase route and keeping the animal scenes short and concise. 
To conclude the showcase segment, each documentary chose it because they wanted to focus on something else alongside their dinosaur depictions. In the case of Planet Dinosaur and Sea Race, they wanted to focus more on the science, while Chased by Sea Monsters just had a completely different format. Each documentary succeeded in giving short glimpses into the prehistoric world that while it doesn't exactly leave the same impact as a story would, it still manages to leave an impression on the audience. The showcase approach also helps documentaries that have a lot of cutaways or just focus on different aspects as it allows them to show the dinosaurs without having to worry about the story being broken up. The three documentaries also did a good job in making the scenes still feel somewhat connected, whether it's an overlying narrative or a central theme that is present in all the scenes. One final thing is that it helps provide entertainment that while can be attributed to surface level entertainment, still helps to attract mainstream audiences to go watch the documentary. So after all that rambling, what can we take away from this analysis? Well, the first thing is that I will always stand that implementing a story within your dinosaur documentary is always better because it gives more depth to it. But I will acknowledge that if you want to put a stronger emphasis on the science or you just have a completely different format, then the showcase route will allow you to do all those things while still having the scenes of the dinosaurs. At the end of the day, like most things in life, it depends on the situation and there are pros and cons with each one and it again depends on what you're trying to go for and what you want to show within your dinosaur documentary. And really, no choice is superior to the other and just comes down to personal preference on which one you prefer and which one you perceive to be better. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Um, first of all, I was completely like, okay, how should I share with this? Well, well, while writing the script for this, I was kind of unsure how to properly format this video, whether I should do a head to head comparison, which by the way, I think is a good video idea that I might consider doing in the future, or you know, like the one that it ended up being. So, yeah, it was kind of, it was, it's kind of weird to write this because I didn't really know what direction I wanted to go in, but. This is the direction I chose. But the, the other thing I want to talk about is that this video is kind of also a setup for the Wednesday video that will come out in two weeks. Which I will not spoil, but it's kind of, you know, a sort of background check. I don't know, I don't know what you would describe it as. Um, you'll see when that video comes out in the next two weeks, but um, yeah, it's kind of an off day for me too. Actually, yeah, well yesterday yeah, was an off day, I'm recording this on Monday morning actually. But um, yeah, anyways, enough of that. Uh, um, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.